If the rumors are true, Peter Parker's best buddy Ned might just be the next Hobgoblin. But while this is an appealing theory, he's not the only character who took one of the Goblin's mantle throughout the Spider-Man franchise. So considering that Marvel Studios are keen on making us viewers suffers with all these red herrings WandaVision style, it's useful to look at all other possibilities before stopping at just one theory. After all, the Green Goblin name has been taken by many. Flash Thompson is also dressed up as Hobgoblin, and even a Peter Parker from another dimension was one. With the multiverse opening up, let's look at 20 possible characters and variants that could fit into this role. After his father, Norman Osborn, Harry is one of the most well-known Green Goblins. He was featured in the Sam Raimi Spider-Man trilogy and in Mark Webb's Amazing Spider-Man 2, so chances are the character will show up in one form or another sometime in the MCU. In both previous live-action films, the character takes cues from his comic book counterpart giving him a tragic story, which spirals him into madness. Being mistreated or completely ignored by his father, when Norman died, Harry completely lost it. As his life was getting darker by the minute, he discovered his father's identity and Spider-Man's at the same time, setting him on a path for vengeance. Having similar abilities to his father, Harry wasn't totally like him in the end, since he sacrificed himself to save his best friend, Peter Parker. While there's a widespread knowledge that Harry is Norman's successor, did you know that Norman's Goblin was in fact not the original one? The honors go to Nels Van Adder, an ex-employee of Oscorp. Norman Osborn, being his usual evil self, actually tested an early version of the Goblin Serum on Adder, but things didn't go so well. Granted, Norman's transformation had its problems, but Adder became an untapable beast, killing anyone who stood in his way right after the transformation. He became a vivid red while his eyes started glowing green and his teeth began growing and sharpening. His blind rage seemed to actually be directed at Norman, who almost got ripped to shreds if it wasn't for the intervention of Captain George Stacy and his brother Arthur. Since the creature escaped and is still at large, this could be an interesting way to introduce the world of goblins into the MCU. The original Hobgoblin Roderick Kingsley was by far one of the most intelligent and tactical of all the Hobgoblins. The explosive pumpkin-throwing villain had one great advantage if we compare him to Norman or Harry. The man was completely sane. Unlike many others, the Goblin Serum seems not to have affected his sanity at all. This makes him way more level-headed when making decisions, but also means that he was purely evil since every crime he committed was done with a clear mind and conscious intentions. The rich fashion designer basically took Green Goblin's original suit, made it fashionable, and used a demonic glider in an attempt to stop all of his competitors. I don't know a lot about fashion, and I didn't know that it was such a cutthroat industry. Since Harry Osborn wasn't feeling so well about all that was happening in his life, he decided to get therapy. Enter Dr. Bart Hamilton. Psychiatrists in the comics world interestingly seem to navigate a fine line between sane healers who understand the mind and people on the verge of completely losing it Harley Quinn style. Hamilton is one of them. When Harry revealed everything about the Green Goblin identity and where the weapons and gear were stashed, Hamilton did one of the most unprofessional things a psychiatrist could do. He went and got them for himself. After trying the costume for himself, he decided that he, and only him, was the true Green Goblin. Feeling quite fashionable, he decided to take on Spider-Man and become a villain because he could. While Harry joined the fight taking Spidey's side, Hamilton, who was more of a wannabe than anything else, ended up blowing himself up by accident with a bomb that was intended for Spider-Man. While this goblin was rather forgettable, he opened the door for the first Hobgoblin. And this in itself has its own value. In an attempt to disappear from the scene, Roderick Kingsley eventually framed Ned Leeds and decided that he was done with all this Halloween stuff. But one person loved Halloween even more than Kingsley did, and that person was the psycho Jason Masondale, who used to go by Jack O'Lantern, the character who seems to stop being in a constant identity crisis while keeping with the pumpkin theme decided he would just take all Hobgoblin's equipment and become him. While he was no mastermind like Kingsley, he nevertheless brought a lot of entertainment to the franchise with all his poor life choices, which brought him to sell his soul to a demon and even try to become a cyborg at some point. Masondale was eventually killed by the fashion designer who decided it was time to reclaim his Hobgoblin title. Some of us might be more familiar with Masondale since he was the Hobgoblin featured in the iconic 1990s Spider-Man animated series. I'm not going to get into that whole cyborg face Mason Dale got into, but I can't pass up the opportunity to talk about Demogoblin. During the Inferno Crisis, Mason Dale thought it would be a good idea to follow a bunch of demons and confront their leader, Nastier. Spoiler alert, it was a bad idea. 
Instead of powering up Masondale like he requested, the Demon Lord asked one of his people to possess him, which in fact gave him superhuman speed, strength, and everything super. But the problem is, both Masondale and the Demon now living inside of him were in a constant battle to have control. This led Masondale to eject the Demon from his own body and to create the Demo Goblin. That version of the Goblin could use magic against his enemies, or what he calls sinners, which is pretty much everyone on Earth. He also came with a pretty impressive demonic goblin glider permanently on Hellfire. In the 1990s, Marvel and DC Comics worked on a crossover project called Amalgam Comics. While they might have simply put their characters with DCs, they decided to adopt a rather peculiar approach. They merged characters from both universes together. This resulted in a deadly mix between Batman and Wolverine named Darkclaw, Spider-Boy who was part Spider-Man and part Superboy, and the merging of Wonder Woman and Storm resulting in the superheroine Amazon. While those are examples taken from the good guys, villains also got the same treatment. In this fused universe, the Goblin is also known as Harvey Osborn, or Two-Faced Goblin, making for a supervillain with a whole lot of crazy. While this version, who has a vendetta against Darkclaw, might not see the light of day in Spider-Man No Way Home, who knows? Maybe one day when Disney has acquired Warner Brothers and the whole world. Harry Osborn's ex-girlfriend Lily Hoster first appeared as the supervillain Menace in the comic book Amazing Spider-Man number 549. Similar to a bunch of other goblins I discussed in this video, she accidentally stumbled upon one of the Green Goblin's hideouts. Of all places, this one was hidden in Harry's closet. The secret door led to her discovering his gear, costumes, and the infamous Goblin formula. After knocking over some of the formula, it got onto her and her skin by accident, giving the ability to turn into Menace, a hideous horned goblin with bright yellow eyes. While she would be a great addition to No Way Home, she might just appear in Secret Invasion, as she was involved and appeared as Menace during the Skrull Invasion, positioning her somewhere between heroes and villains as she fought against the invaders. Hector Jones stands as the Green Goblin of Earth 751263, or the universe found in the animated series Spider-Man Unlimited. The series brought our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man into a parallel sci-fi world called Counter-Earth, ruled by beast-human hybrids. Unlimited's Green Goblin is actually a hero compared to most of his other iterations. Working to help the anti-bestial resistance force, he doesn't have any powers per se, but finds his powers in his goblin suit. Just like the original Green Goblin, he uses pumpkin bombs, and instead of using a glider as a transportation device, he has a device called Goblin Wings hooked to his armor, which allows him to fly around the city and save the day. Skipping all the tragedy and making the Green Goblin a hero from the get-go could be a refreshing take on the character in the MCU. I could see Spidey hitch a ride on his glider as they head into battle. As if there weren't enough goblins already, Norman Osborn teamed up with Dr. Angst to create a robotic version of his villain self. Known as the Green Goblin Construct, or the Faceless Android Goblin, the machine was created to keep Norman in the clear, as he can't be in two places at the same time, right? On one occasion, he had the fake Green Goblin kidnap his grandson Normie, making him believe his dad Harry came back to life. That's pretty cold. So while everyone was busy trying to figure out who the new Green Goblin was, Norman was safe from any suspicion. As far as evil plans go, it's a pretty clever one. If the MCU decides to keep their Netflix show Daredevil canon and introduce Matthew Murdock in their film, this could be the opportunity to bring the Goblin King Phil Ulrich to the big screen. The villain who looks like he works part-time at a medieval fair is actually Ben Ulrich's nephew. If you don't quite remember who Ben was, he was the Daily Bugle's investigative journalist who got strangled by the gigantic Wilson Fisk. Initially, Phil wanted to use his newfound powers to do good, but the Goblin formula being what it is, he eventually sided with the villains and became the new Hobgoblin then the Goblin Knight, and finally ascended to his self-proclaimed title of Goblin King. The Goblin King has all the amazing powers any goblins have, plus a skill unique to him called the Lunatic Laugh, which is basically a sonic attack. Gabriel Stacy is Norman Osborn and Gwen Stacy's child. Yeah, you heard that right. In Amazing Spider-Man, he is raised by Gwen and Peter Parker alongside his twin sister Sarah until Norman killed Gwen as the Green Goblin and kidnapped them, raising them as their uncle. Since the two children had Norman's DNA, which means an amount of goblin formula in their blood, they grew twice as fast as Norman children did, which made Gabriel an adult in no time. When he reached adulthood, he injected himself with the goblin formula in order to exact revenge on Peter Parker, thinking that he was responsible for the death of his mother Gwen. Grey Goblin is just an alternate color version of his father with similar powers and equipment. He later became American's son when he stole the armor of his half-brother Harry. 
I just realized I've been talking about the second goblin Norman Osborn without actually giving his own entry. Norman is basically the reason for all of the following goblins, so he stands as one of the most important goblins of all time. He also holds the prize for one of the most tragic kills in the entire Spider-Man catalog. Having tossed Gwen Stacy, Peter Parker's then-girlfriend, off a bridge, Spidey tried to catch her with his spiderwebs, which caused her neck to break. The scene was adapted in a clock tower in the 2014 film The Amazing Spider-Man 2, making for a tragic loss for our main character. Being one of the most iconic Spider-Man villains, Green Goblin is clearly about to show his ugly face in one of the upcoming Spider-Man movies, as each new installation offers Spidey a more dangerous villain every single time. Set in MC2 universe, Norman Harold Osborn, officially called Normie, is Harry's son, and just like his grandfather and father before him, he turns to the dark side. In that particular future, an adult May Parker, the daughter of Peter and MJ, becomes the superhero known as Spider-Girl. Besides Norman Osborn, every other Osborn seems to lose someone and go full Green Goblin. The same legacy applies to Normie when his mother Liz Allen Osborne dies. He takes on the Green Goblin mantle and, like his predecessors, loses control of himself. Just like his father Harry, he's unstable and unpredictable. Things are a bit different on Earth 616 where he is eventually known as the Goblin Child, a temporary mix between the Goblin formula and the Carnage symbiote. Another likely contender to become one of the Goblins in Spider-Man No Way Home is the annoying Flash Thompson. Or is he? Similarly, like what happened with the Mandarin in Iron Man 3 or Mysterio in Spider-Man Far From Home, the next Spider-Man film could be filled with plot twists and reveals we haven't seen coming. Flash was actually framed as the Hobgoblin by Ned Leeds, who happened to be brainwashed. Peter's bully, who later became one of his best friends, ended up in prison while later being cleared of all charges. The whole Hobgoblin saga is filled with layers, and of course drama all led by none other than Kingsley, the original Hobgoblin. If May Parker, aka Spider-Girl, shows up from one of the many Marvel alternate universes, chances are so will Fury the Goblin Queen. In some ways, Fury, or Elan Dejeuner, is the result of Norman Osborn's legacy, since she is the leader of an organization named the Order of Goblins. The cult who trains their children in the way of the Goblin and injects them with the Goblin formula is only the beginning of something that will grow bigger with the Goblin Nation and the War Goblins. With the Skrulls organizing behind the scenes and Sylvie messing up the sacred timeline and Loki, things could get really interesting if the Goblins start invading Earth at the same time the Skrulls do. It'll be an all-out war of pointy-eared green people. Ned Leeds has been given the role of Peter Parker's best friend and confidant in the MCU so far. But with his recent drastic body transformation, rumors are floating around that he actually might take the Hobgoblin mantle in No Way Home. With Ned being brainwashed by Kingsley into thinking he was the Hobgoblin and then eventually framing Flash Thompson for the villain's crimes, this could prove to be the perfect moment to bring Mysterio back into play. After all, he is the master of illusion, and who really knows if he actually died on that bridge? This could also mean that we could get a supervillain team-up between Norman Osborn and Mysterio, and with both of their genius combined, they would clearly be one hell of a threat for Spidey. Red Goblin must be one of the most powerful iterations of Norman Osborn's Goblin yet. In an attempt to be even more OP, Norman sent some of his men to retrieve the Carnage symbiote from a temple. He then proceeded to bond with the symbiote, which helped him remove nanites that were installed in his body so he would never become the Green Goblin again. So Norman injected himself with the Goblin formula while having the Carnage symbiote inside of him. Thus was born the Red Goblin. This new version of the Goblin has all the typical Goblin powers, with some added quirks like shape-shifting, spider-sense immunity, and immunity to fire. With Woody Harrelson playing Cletus Cassidy in the upcoming film Venom Let There Be Carnage, we might just get to see Carnage slowly enter the MCU if Sony and Disney can get along. Coming from Marvel's Ultimate Universe, the Ultimate Hobgoblin was a fusion between the Green Goblin and the Hobgoblin, or something like it. In an attempt to reboot the Spider-Man franchise at the same time that Sam Raimi's films were getting released, writer Brian Michael Bendis reimagined the Goblin as this huge, hulkish, flying monster. In this universe, the mantle was taken directly by Harry Osborn and came with the usual Goblin set of powers, with added flight skills. He was also capable of pyrokinesis as he could produce fiery energy coming out of his hand, which he could use to make stuff blow up. Unlike other goblins, he didn't have any equipment, but with all his powers and the fact that he could set himself on fire without getting any burns, he didn't really need any. 
Okay, so I think this last goblin is one that would be perfect for the upcoming Multiverse of Madness extravaganza. Coming from the universe Earth-21205, this goblin is actually Peter Parker. When Gwen Stacy was killed by the Green Goblin, Spidey decided to end Norman Osborn once and for all, but the story didn't end there. Overwhelmed with grief, he retired to the Spider-Man persona and took on the Goblin Mantle. Now, what could be interesting for Spider-Man No Way Home is that Gwen Stacy as Spider-Woman comes from another dimension to recruit him into an army of spiders, who fight against the Inheritors, a family of spider killers across dimensions. This could both introduce the idea of goblins into the MCU for a subsequent villain, and Gwen Stacy into the vast web that has become the MCU. The Goblin wasn't the only type of villain that had many versions. The symbiote Venom took over Eddie, Flash, Carol Danvers, Mysterio, and even Otto Octavius. With Alfred Molina returning to the MCU as Dr. Octavius, having him come back with the symbiote from Spider-Man 3 would be quite the interesting twist. 